Hello everybody, it's Trainers103 here today with yet another replay cast. We're fi I finally put it this way, I've been playing the Baguettle for quite a for, for a few games, not that many, I'm actually not sure, like 12-15 fif games at this point. And I've yet to actually get a good game. And I've had a couple of media, well most of my games I would say fall around about the average mark. Anyways, let's kick this off there. I think it actually might be a bit of an interesting match, despite I don't think I actually get a... Uh, I don't even think I breached the 100k marker, so it's it's kind of weird to think that I'm showing you this game, right? But I think, think there is a reason, because it demonstrates what this thing is good at, and what this thing definitely isn't good at. And while I actually think this is a... actually kind of balanced premium, and I guess that's why they're giving it out for free, right? But for all those um, Baguettle players that are uh, starting to get it, let's just go over what I think is good about it, what I think is bad about it, what I think it does well, what I don't think it handles. And I think this replay, while it isn't a spectacular game, it is, in my opinion, probably one of the more representative of the general combat performance of this vessel. So first off, we're engine boosting towards B and check that speed out, 45 knots approaching. So I'm pretty confident against the lineup of Akatsuki and Kamikaze R, uh, Kamikaze even, that uh, I'm going to get here pretty early, despite having this arguably inferior spore. And of course, um, if I do run into Akatsuki or Kamikaze problems, and they are heading straight towards me, I wouldn't want to do so in the early game because I'm going to attract all the attention, but later on, if uh, I run into them in a battle battle situation, I can pretty much use my baguette boost and just run them down. And they'll never be able to get out of the concealment range, and I can even approach at a reasonable angle, while still being able to gauge with a reasonable amount of firepower. Now, I am RPF'd, and at this point there's no real way to know wh where it is and who it is, but it's it's probably the Kamikaze, you know, and, you know, there's reasons why they don't really want to be dealing with this kind of crap, but, uh, uh, you know, they, they do not want to have a baguette running them down, so, uh, you know, it's just not really good for... Um, for long, you know, the, their long-term survivability. We'll, 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 we'll see more about that, little little bit of a spoiler alert here. Regardless, I'm in Bravo and I'm not being locked down. We've got a baguette coming in and uh, what's not, so uh, Nagato's heading up north for bugger all knows why, but fine, he's kind of heading there alone. This map tends to have the northern team blob to C and the southern team blob to A, in my opinion. I, I don't even know why this happens, like from a psychological point of view. Because the southern team doesn't really get that bad of an approach on Charlie. The northern team gets less space up there to maneuver with, you know, this island uh, over here. Kind of reducing the space available. And, you know, this isn't as usable as this for cover as well. This is in a better position for you to sneak something fast around. So, it's, like, uh, it's just weird. Granted, it's, you know, well, I mean, it's a lot easier to kite over here than it is to kite this uh, in this direction. Kind of. But regardless, my Bouquet boost is expiring now. I, I did want to get to be early just to ensure that we get it, but uh, at this point, I'm not really sure what my team's up to. I know the smoke is here. I don't really want to use it because I want to, you know, despite not having my Bouquet boost, well, I'm about to lose my Bouquet boost because I kind of want to be moving and I kind of want to just head towards say, I noticed the Akatsuki on the map. This game was actually kind of uh, played on my, on my uh, stream. So uh, if you want to watch the uh, the live reactions and whatnot, uh, head over there, twitch.tv slash trainers103, find the videos. It will be there. I don't think it's worth highlighting or anything, so here we go. I do get a fire on the Iron Puke, but uh, he Damacons out because uh, reasons. Guy's sailing broadside, which means he's less vulnerable to AG overall, and nobody's really in a position to shoot at him overall, so it's kind of a bit of a wasted fire there, and someone else at least gets one on him, so it's going to be one lasting fire forced upon him. But I'm pretty much just hoping here for luck, while heading aggressively towards A. Astiorus is uh, sukubliating the Akatsuki. Who, if you notice, has been forced into a bit of an awkward turn. You see bow onto the stores. Uh, you know, obviously smoked up, otherwise we would have spotted it. I was you know, just wanting to head over here, and there you go, Akatsuki gets spotted, so I'm going to open fire. Stiorus takes one of the first salvos, dodges the second one, however there's a third salvo coming in, and uh, the Stiorus was not actually prepared for that, so... Uh, he's about to go down, and he was the one with the hydroacoustic search, you can see why the torpedo spotting and whatnot. So I'm just gonna fall down fish in there. I probably should stop shooting at this point. Uh, without my baguette boost, uh, I don't really want to be in the open trying to trade against this Normandy group. The Normandy I actually recognize doesn't have a completely horrible aim, so I stop and drop there immediately to try to dodge it. Gonna use my smoke screen here just to bleed the Kutsky smoke screen, because I know approximately how long he's been having it up for. And the enemy Kalikaz is just revealing himself to me as well, so 
Now we realize that this is actually a massive spot. A lot of Akatsuki leaves while on fire, and our, our Akatsuki gets a spot on them. So we need to pick this guy up, and our melee baguette is actually paying attention. Does so. I'm gonna plink at this Normandy just a little bit. Then at this point, uh, I actually overestimated the uh, time left on the Akatsuki smoke. His smoke screen is actually, uh, you know, it's, it's gone by now. And Stuart is asking what the uh, torpedo lineup of the Akatsuki is. Someone clearly doesn't check important about this kind of stuff. Then and again, you know. How many people bother spending the amount of time I spent in learning game mechanics, right? Regardless, I'm figuring that the Kamikaze R was the guy who kept C and entered B from the north, so I gave him a little bit of additional time, so I'm uh, preparing to leave my smoke screen right about now. Figuring that the enemy Kamikaze having spotted Arakatsuki is likely coming to torpedo this smoke screen, because uh, that would make the most amount of sense for him. So very shortly, uh, and right about now, I'm going to launch some ridiculous looking torpedoes back, just to try to cover my back in a way. And then abandon smoke, because uh, this thing's firing angles is pretty bad. And the moment I leave it with my baguette booster up, I actually get spotted. So I have, a fe I have a feeling I know where the guy is. It's unlikely he's heading in this direction to chase this. He's probably coming, you know, he's probably either coming up here or he went down there. But the fact that he spotted me means he didn't go this way, so he's likely up here. And there you go, the incoming torpedo salvo is actually a massive surprise to me. I didn't expect him to come, uh, to come like, it had been like going this direction. I more would have expected, a, you know, either a path along here or a path along here. But, uh, you know, I was more expecting this one. But there you go, I find him, so I'm going to run him down. And I know he's passed one, at least one salvo against me, jamming his engine. He definitely has a smoke screen available, so he, he can use that to... Um, unfuck his situation if he needs to. And those things do actually hurt you quite a bit. Now with my AFT, you can see I'm being spotted by the... Well, I mean, the Normandy here would spot me regardless, and I don't actually have torpedoes now, because I launched them in, in kind of the expect, expected direction. I have, I decide I want to damage control party that to maintain full maneuverability, and pretty much just hope that he isn't going to jam my engine again. And you see, uh, someone else is aiming at me as well, because he's almost certainly got torpedoes prepared, and you can see the shells coming in from over there. First salvo miss, and this is the uh, massive strength of having the baguette move. Second salvo miss, third salvo is also a complete miss. So at this point, I, I just decide, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna run you down with torpedoes. At this point, widespreads are perfectly fine, and that's in case you kind of stop and drop to try to. Uh, uh, the second one is unled like that, but I know I just need to hit him with one, and he's gone. Then I'm going to uh, um, borrow this guy's smoke for a little bit. And, you know, here you go, I've got 20 seconds left on the smoke, and 14 seconds left until mine comes online, but the targets that I wanted to shoot at kind of go in this, so... Unfortunately, not gonna get that. But, I just got to run down the enemy kamikaze, and I suppose that their destroyer is eliminated, which can be kind of useful, because we have an Akatsuki remaining on full HP, and this guy with good torpedo, you know, with good torpedo drops, can definitely do a lot of damage to the enemy team. And he's gonna need to because, well, we still haven't cleared out the A side yet, the enemy team over here still needs to be uh, dealt with, and they're gonna be starting to head in this direction. We're getting the cap at least, our Sunkirk is, uh, over here, f being forced to run, you can see the rest of our team isn't really doing overall too hot. We're down to Nagato because the guy decided he wants to commit suicide up here because paying attention to the map is uh, clearly difficult, but then and again, once you recognize a plan tag, you don't expect anything out of it to begin with. This Gilead side is gonna be minorly annoying, he clearly knows I'm here, so um, he's gonna be... Well, at this point, I'm just hoping he's going to make a bit of a fishy turn and we can get rid of him, but, um... The Sing Torpedoes, they're 57 knots at uh, 7 kilometers range. They actually deal some reasonable damage uh, when they do finally hit, but uh, getting them to hit in the first place is kind of the biggest problem. Now, at this point, uh, my second baguette boost, uh, the one I used to run down the Kamikaze R, is about to expire. I do have a smoke screen, but uh, that's not really going to help me much at this point, because I'm just going to get run down by the baguette. You see this Akatsuki here for some reason putting a smoke screen, so I'm like, nah, I'll, I'll shoot once and hopefully not skid out of it, but uh, I actually do skid out of it, so I get myself spotted, which is a little bit silly, but uh, for the most part, they're going to be shooting at the Akatsuki, which is kind of bad overall, because, you know, if he gets killed and he's continuing to shoot here, you know, that really wouldn't be good. So I'm like, you know what, screw it, I'll, I'll use my smoke as well, because, you know, I might as well just sit here and plink. We get good torpedo, and our Britannia goes down to emerald torpedoes. Like, that's, uh, that's a new one. So, well done to the emerald. It's a really, 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 really bad ship overall to grind. But he seems to have uh, gotten some XP out of that, so it'll help him on his way nice and merrily. Spamming at the Leon, which is, of course, their tier 7 battleship. The guy's on, uh, for all intents and purposes, a full HP. We're down some points, but equal on ships, actually, and these are... Uh, uh, baguette torpedoes. I'm not sure why Arakatsuki is trying to stick around there. Just one of us being in the cap's good enough. He's actually evaded that uh, baguette salvo. And that smoke screen was really just for me to 
to just figure out what to do next. And now, I've decided what I want to do next. I want to go to try to torpedo the, the Leon and Bayern group. This thing is torpedo, as you can see, 6.8 kilometer surface detectability range. Makes it so that you, if you want to torpedo anything on a parallel path, you have to be in front of them, you have to cut them off, like, like if these guys are traveling in this direction, right? You have to get to here, torpedo, and then break away. Otherwise, you, you know, because you, you need a torpedo completely parallel to them. And then there you can, you know, with that way you can drop torpedoes, uh, which will travel about 6 kilometers in, in actual range before they reach the target. You know, despite having 6.8 kilometer surface detectability range. Anyways, with my torpedoes uh, loaded and with no enemy destroyers to mess my day up, it's if, if I get spotted, it is purely a uh, mistake of my own, and it, it is pretty easy to misjudge uh, this kind of stuff. And you can see, this is pretty much a textbook launch. It's against the Bayern, but you can see it's uh, it's it's almost uh, it, it's almost a textbook launch against the guy getting in front, getting a complete parallel torpedo just aiming at a ninety degree uh, angle from him. I don't know why Arakatsuki is opening fire in the middle of the open, but. Uh, if that guy had uh, considered using, you know, this thing called concealment and uh, camo dropping torpedoes, this game would have been a uh, very, very, very high chance for us to, to actually be able to come back from it. But as it stands right now, you can see the enemy team's got uh, four battleships, one's a TS-7. We don't really have much. Um, oops. Uh, come on, straighten us. There we go. You can see we actually killed the enemy Albert, but this guy has reversed himself into a corner. There's nothing I can do about it. The Bayern actually takes those torpedoes, so two torpedoes for devastating strike is pretty incredible. Sorry I didn't actually show you that, but it's more important in my opinion, because this guy's gonna go down, this guy's not achieving much. We've got two cleave lols, which really don't have much of, a, of an ability to do anything. I can't really get around to do anything at this point. This Kernish is healthy, but he's against a Gilead Satider plus a lot of cruisers, so he's easily gonna get spammed down. At this point, I'm trying to approach the arm, but for some bloody reason, the guy's actually running away. I mean, at this, you know, if... If it wasn't for the fact that our team's battleships, uh, our TS-7 was uh, even worse than this guy, then this guy could actually be causing problems for their team. Because he's currently not really in in a effective position. He's got one Cleveland to engage, and granted he's tying down me in the Cleveland, but uh, uh, for the moment the enemy team's not capping B, so that's fine. Just going to go in for one torpedo drop against this guy, use my forget boost and head back towards B, see if he can't achieve anything over there. But as long as the Iron Puke and Nuremberg and Gilead Tatara and Algeria are still around, it's going to be a problem. We need to focus down on the enemy Nuremberg, get him out of the cap. We also need to get the Iron Duke reset as well. So I think I'm actually going to give a little focus fire marker on the Iron Duke while the Nuremberg is still alive, just to make sure that you know people might consider shooting at that. Turn out this Leon wasn't going to turn in and actually play smart. He wants to use all of its guns to shoot at the Cleveland that's, that's uh, running away. So, fair share to that at least, I guess. Currently, the Nuremberg is actually the one attracting the attention. I see the Kernish is the one that gets the kill, and I'm pretty sure the QE just salvoed, and the Cleveland's out of range, so... At this point, I'm actually going to decide to open fire on the Iron Puke. We need to make sure that we get the resets on Bravo, so two salvos in on that. Leon's turning around now, so he probably feels confident in the fact that I'm not coming his way, but the four hits is 100% reset, you just need three. Going to smoke up here, because I'm pretty sure that Leon is uh, going to find an interest in me, because... Uh, there you go, he does. But he's well out of the game right now, he's trying to come back into it uh, overall, so it's not too bad for him overall. But uh, if he just, uh, you know, comes and... I mean, think of him as the... Think of him as the hammer, and think of this as the anvil. If he just comes in and applies hammer to anvil, this it, it's basically a guaranteed uh, defeat for us. But at this point, having had uh, Bravo for a little bit of time, we're actually catching up on the points. Uh, and you can see, we do actually have one more ship than them, which is the only reason why... We were kind of ahead. I mean, at this point, we are three points ahead, but I wouldn't really count it for much. And they do still have an Algerie, not really sure what the guy's doing, but again, the Algerie on the other flank and the northern flank could also just completely kite down our force to try to make a move. Get a fight on the Iron Puke, he's just probably going to damage on it. This Cleveland is low HP. The Kurdish has been bleeding health, while this guy hasn't been achieving much. This Cleveland actually didn't bleed much to Leon, which is kind of nice. And it doesn't seem like the guy has a damage on, so a little, little spoke of, a spot of luck for us over there. Seems like he's on two fires at this point, so if we can actually focus and kill the Iron Puke down, it's, it's a little bit of additional uh, ship to play with on our side, but he takes down our Kurdish, so this is, uh, even if you do get the kill, it's an unfavorable trade, because again, we're down to one battleship, they still have three. Anyways, I actually get the kill on the Iron Puke with my shells of all things, so it's a bit of a surprise. But at this point, it's time for me to abandon my smoke screen. And Leon doesn't want to get too close. I mean, he still doesn't. You don't want to take too many torpedoes from this thing. It's you know, even if it is a the Eagle and it doesn't have the world's best torpedoes. 
Now, at this point, the question is, what do I do and what do we do? And having used my smoke screen there, it arguably could have been a mistake. In hindsight, if I had been able to smoke this Cleveland and give him the ability to farm this Giliotetaro a little bit, this could have perhaps gone a little bit uh, better. But uh, also, a part of it comes down to, well, I mean, we needed an, an, a torpedo boat to, you know, torpedo them. So that guy throwing the ship away was really, really weird because he was doing what I should have been doing and I had to do his job because he wasn't doing it. So if you are in a torpedo boat destroyer, torpedo boat destroyer? Like all destroyers? If you're in a torpedo destroyer, you know, the one that's actually kind of focused on torpedoes, then, you know, being able to uh, stay alive, get a good angle on torpedo, and at this point the Algerie has not been spotted, so he's pretty much been 100% irrelevant, so we're fighting right now five, you know, four in terms of purpose, four versus two. The Algerie is shooting over the island, but like that's not really being relevant. He could have easily ended, uh, ended this game with no chance for the enemy team, well, in this case us, to win this by just taking a flanking position out here and being incredibly annoying, instead of sitting behind there and wanking. Mostly, of course, that depends on these guys uh, not suiciding themselves on me. If these guys suicide themselves on me, then we can still win this, which would not have been possible if this guy applied the hammer to the anvil and the Algerie up there uh, made sure that it stayed that way. So at this point, the Gilio seems to be turning into this. I'm not exactly sure, so I'm just going for a white line rush uh, to temporarily get myself spotted, which is a massive mistake over here because it pretty much tells the Gilio exactly what's going on. So he can easily just get himself... Uh, out of this one because I screwed that one up and that's the big downside about this thing if you want to get into a reasonable torpedo range and if he has a map he'll realize it now you can see where is uh, I'm actually not sure if it's, if it's a crit on a number two turret or not but you can see he's he definitely could be paying attention to this side of the the map and he's just trying to run away at the moment uh, instead of trying to fight the Clevelands the closer you get to the Cleveland the weaker it becomes just FYY Someone, the Leon, actually wipes uh, our uh, Cleavelol, and that's really, really unfortunate, because, yeah, he's actually the one that had a little bit of health to play with. We're still holding B, but that's not going to be enough, because they can easily pressure me out of it, and the Cleveland doesn't have the health to actually uh, take this at this point, so it's just going to be 100% up to luck to, uh, to win this game. And, spoiler alert, we're not. Nothing I showed what's good about the ship, and uh, what isn't good about the ship. Now, what is it good at? Plinking away at people. What is it not good at? Even remotely trying to torpedo anything, 2x3 launchers with short range and slow speed really isn't the world's best overall. So, could I potentially have won this game from this point onwards? Yeah, I actually maybe could have, if I had gone out here and just started spamming at them with my last baguette boost, which lasts almost 3 minutes, which, well, you know, at this point would have been the, the rest of the game, I would have been able to have a baguette boost up. But, uh, that would unlikely have been able to kill anything, really, so, again, it's just me trying to torpedo, which is what this thing isn't good at. Now, it does have very floaty arcs, so you have to know, you know, I have to have a little bit of a clue on how to, uh, on how to use these floaty arcs to actually get anything out of it, but if you do understand, you know, you can't blink battleships at long range, you can potentially achieve something. Now, I'm, right at this point, I'm trying to deal with the Giliot Tatsada instead. I, I honestly believe that I should have chased the Leon down, because that probably could have done me a little bit more use, you know, in terms of getting some actual damage and, you know, getting a game over 100k for once in my life in this thing, but, uh, Still, 60k is what I'd consider to be a reasonably average game, and some of this damage is from having run down the enemy Kamikaze and the uh, their Akatsukis, which is another thing this thing can do pretty well. If you're able to get into a position where you can just insert gun on someone, you know, you, you could have, uh, you, you could have, you know, done something. Now this, now the genius uh, that actually gets himself blattered is saying you could have kept D, uh, C in this time. No, you couldn't, because the enemy Algeri was behind the island and he would have prevented that, so... Uh, so that is actually just uh, the, the enemy Cleveland that died being completely stupid. However, this is not a uh, destroyer that is capable of torpedoing. I'm holding myself at this point because I realize there's only going to be one last launch left this game. So it's just, you know, it's just, can I get some additional damage at, at the end of this one? And again, the answer to that's going to be a pretty clear no because it's, the ship is not really one that's supposed to be uh, used like this. Now I'm going to launch on, I'm going to launch like this, but uh, it's, it's, Pretty much a waste of time because he can just sit behind here and actually still be in the camp. At this point, these guys just need to sit here and here and absolutely do nothing because they've pretty much won at that point. But uh, with way too much health and no more and not enough torpedo launchers uh, from my end, the game is uh, definitely going to be 100% screwed and there's no coming back like I've said so many times at this point. So, in the end, how do I think the baguette should be played? Well, you try to stick it around at reasonably uh, long ranges, but uh, you don't actually... Uh, 
you know, gets too far away, otherwise your floaty arcs are gonna make your life absolutely impossible. But you don't get too close to stuff because your concealment isn't good. You don't want to be dealing with destroyers that are able to outspot you while they have fire support. If they don't have support, then yeah, you can run them down like we demonstrated in this replay, but other than that, uh, there's nothing you can really do about that. So, with that, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, baguettle, I guess you could say showcase, because as of yet, the replays I can remember, this is the one that showcases just in general what the ship is uh, much better than just, oh hey, let's take a 200,000 damage game where the entire enemy team feeds you, because hey, let's be stupid about this uh, shit uh, and uh, whatnot, because, uh, you know, let's just showcase what the best you can do with any ship that has torpedoes, because hey, having torpedoes does lots and lots of damage, and if people feed yourself into the torpedoes, you can have a good game. When in reality, that's not really the, not really showing the the thing you can actually expect out of the ship, and don't worry, that's my Steam at the bottom right corner. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the end of Destroyer Week, with the replays I got in my camera replay analysis folder, it, uh, email folder. It looks like it might be an aircraft carrier week coming up uh, this time, so we'll see what happens with that. If you would like to send your own replays for analysis, send them in to replays.strainers123 at gmail.com. Address will also be in the description box below. I have a Discord server join and uh, discuss the game, talk about things, ask me questions about World of Warships and its game mechanics. And I do stream occasionally on Twitch.tv, so follow me there on Twitch.tv slash Strangers123. Links will all be in the description. Have a great day, take care, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.